One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for that. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and I tried to do a live stream, as you can tell, because I'm sitting here in my living room, but for some reason, the new stream settings on YouTube wasn't letting me stream. I was supposed to do a live interactive mock draft tonight, but it didn't work out. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it's not working. I'm going to have to dive into that more, especially for live reactions during the seasons and season and figure out, you know, exactly what is going on. So I apologize for that, but I am here for a video, ladies and gentlemen, and today it's a little early to be doing this, but with Nick Foles, we're not going to take the draft into consideration, but the free agent signings the Jaguars have made, and then maybe some ideal, you know, predictory uh, draft that the Jags did. We're going to go over the Jaguars' floor and ceiling as far as wins go. Uh, I'm going to call it post-free agency because... I don't think the Jags are really going to sign anybody else too big in free agency, so I think it's fair to do that. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what is the Jaguars floor and ceiling for wins in 2019. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the win-loss record, uh, ceiling, not win-loss record, but the ceiling and the floor as far as wins go for the Jacksonville Jaguars post-free agency. Like I said, I think it's fair to call this period right here post-free agency because I don't anticipate the Jaguars signing anybody else too big uh, or just basically in general to really uh, affect this team in free agency, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that there's enough big-name free agents, especially ones with the Jaguars salary cap situation that they can sign in order for them uh, to add more players in free agency. So, like I said, I think this is fair calling it the post-free agency Jaguars floor and ceiling as far as win goes. The Jags come into 2019 with the third hardest, uh, not necessarily schedule, but the third hardest opponents. Here are the home opponents for the Jaguars. You got the Kansas City Chiefs, oof. The Saints, oof. The Chargers, oof. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Jets, Titans, Texans, Colts, obviously. And then when we're going on the road, we're going to Carolina, oof, Atlanta, Denver, Oakland, Cincinnati, and then, of course, the divisional opponents. So first and foremost, let's discuss uh, the division. I'm hoping the Jaguars can beat the Titans at least once. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that this year is the year the Jags finally beat Tennessee. Like, that's what everybody was saying when they signed Nick Foles. They're like, can he at least beat the Titans? That's all that matters. We can go 1-15 even, and as long as one of those wins is against the Titans, I think Jaguar fans would be okay with that. Not really. Jaguar fans would not be okay with that. But we would be happy the game that we beat Tennessee in. I'm 100% sure and positive about that. So I'm hoping the Jags can bust out at least one victory against the Titans. Now, as far as the Colts go... The Colts are really off and on. Every time that we play the Colts, it seems like we have no shot. But last year, we beat the Colts with Andrew Luck when we had Cody Kessler, and the score was only 6-0. to zero. So, you know, you never know with the Colts and the Jags and how uh, they're going to meet up and what exactly is going to go down uh, in those matchups. So, I'm hoping that the Jags can at least win one there against the Colts. And as far as Houston goes, I think Houston's going to take a step back this year. I don't know why. I have a gut feeling. I think Deshaun Watson, his performance... Uh, in the playoffs against the Colts had really kind of exposed the Texans and really showed what kind of team they're truly going to be from here on out. Deshaun Watson did not play big in uh, big moments, and you've seen that against the Colts. They got completely derailed in the playoffs, and you know that's going to hurt their momentum going forward. So I think if there's a team that the Jaguars can sweep in the division this year, I think it's going to be Houston. But, again, that's kind of a reach because the Jags, you know, we don't know <laughs> with Nick Foles how much of a difference he's going to make. This could be another 5-11 and year with the Jaguars to uh, really upset us because we, we couldn't get the job done. But, like I said, if there were a team in the AFC South that I would imagine the Jaguars could sweep, it'd be Houston. But, as far as Tennessee, Indianapolis goes, uh, I see us either splitting with them or losing both of those games because, you know, it depends. It depends on how Nick Foles does. It's, it really does. It depends on what Nick Foles shows up. If it's the Nick Foles of Philadelphia, then, you know, we have an opportunity to really do something. But if it's the Nick Foles of, like, Kansas City and the Rams, 
eh, you're kind of dealing with a little bit of a trickier situation <laughs> with that. So, um, we'll see. Like I said, it's, you know, Nick Foles really depends on his performance. Let's go over the home games next. We got the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, last time we played the Chiefs was last year, and the Jaguars were on top of the world, 3-1. and one. Just beat the New England Patriots in Week 2. Beat the Jets the week prior, I believe. And then we went into Arrowhead, played the Chiefs, and wow, we <laughs> got completely destroyed with Blake Bortles at the helm. Now, this Chiefs team, it has gotten a little bit uh, less explosive, I could say, on the offensive end. With uh, Kareem Hunt going to the Browns and Tyreek Hill, you're not really 100% sure what his situation is going to be, if he's going to end up getting suspended or cut. And, of course, you don't know when you're going to be playing these teams. So um, there's that. But as far as a whole total offense, they still got Travis Kelsey and they still got the reigning league MVP and Patrick Mahomes. This is going to be a tough game. Even though it is at home, I don't think the Jaguars are going to be able to squeak this one out, unfortunately, uh, because they're the Kansas City Chiefs some of the Jacksonville Jaguars right now, and that's uh, how it's going to be until proven otherwise. So, you know, that's a, that's a game I don't expect the Jaguars to win. And you got the Saints as well, which that is also, like, basically the same exact situation where they have Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. Like, unless this defense really steps up big, which is going to be interesting to see. This is a game I actually kind of want to see. And I'm, I'm planning a trip to Jacksonville. I'm planning to go to Jacksonville uh, during next season to see a game, and I'm thinking this is the game I want to go watch because, you know, I get to see the GOAT or one of the GOATs, Drew Brees, play live, and then he's going to be going up against his Jaguar defense. Let's see how well they hold up, and uh, it really depends with the Saints defense because this defense is also really off and on. It could be really good or really bad some weeks, uh, really good some weeks as well. Uh, so, you know, it really depends uh, on what the Jaguar offense does in this game. But, you know, you know damn well the Saints the Saints offense is capable of scoring 30-plus points a game. And this Jaguar defense is going to have to step up in that situation. So, um, you know, not a likely victory there either. The Chargers, the Jags always, 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 always struggle against the Chargers. The last time they played, they did barely squeak one out. Literally, Bortles almost threw that one away like he has so many other games. But he ended up not doing that in the Jags with a AJ Boye, I believe, 60-yard uh, interception return to the one-yard line, led by a 19-yard uh, field goal by Josh Lambeau to give the Jaguars the eventual uh, victory. So that game's always going to be tough. The Jags are always struggling against the Chargers, so I don't expect a victory there either. Uh, and then the other two home games that are non-divisional games, of course, you got Tampa Bay and the Jets. The Jags always seem to do well against the Jets. They lost to them in the 2017 year. But other than that, the Jags usually consistently play well against the Jets. And, you know, they're going to have Le'Veon Bell, so that's going to be a bit of a difference maker. But the Jags have held Bell in check, you know, the two times they played him recently. So, you know, there's that. And then Tampa Bay, you got Bruce Arians there. You don't really know what direction he's going to be taking this franchise. So, you know, again, that's up in the air. A lot of these games are completely... Uh, up in the air, like I say. But, you know, we're trying to formulate a floor and a ceiling. We're not necessarily trying to do overall win-loss record prediction for the 2019 season. And then going on the road, we got Carolina, who, you know, slowly but surely, some of their pieces are going away. Uh, and Cam Newton, I, w I wouldn't say Cam Newton's getting old, but, you know, he's definitely, he's getting up there, but he's still one of the game's best quarterbacks. There's this video that surfaces on Twitter every now and again that's just the most beautiful throw I've ever seen, and it was thrown... Uh, by Cam Newton, so I have nothing but good words to say about the Panthers and Cam Newton. That's going to be a tough one for the Jags. Uh, you got Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. That one's also going to be tough. Uh, Joe Flacco and the Denver Broncos. I'm hoping that's one that the Jags could uh, snatch away. The uh, Jalen Ramsey and AB are going to meet for the third year in a row when we take on the uh, Oakland Raiders, so that's going to be an interesting matchup, and uh, it's always going to be an interesting matchup. And then we got the Bengals, which is a game I think that if there was a game on the schedule that I'd be 100% confident saying the Jags would win, it's going to be against Cincinnati. Uh, they don't really have much of a team around them except for A.J. Green. They just lost Vontez Burfecht, one of their better defenders. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that one, you know, in this whole schedule, I see, you know, let's not count the division. I see two, three, four, five, five winnable games <laughs> right off the bat, you know, but I'm not going to say that that'll be the ceiling. Uh, I'm going to tell you the floor and ceiling right after this. 
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to formulate a floor and a ceiling for the Jaguars in 2019 post-free agency win-loss record. Now, as for a floor, I'm going to go very low. I'm going to say four wins. I'm saying four wins is the floor for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like I said, as far as overall opponents go, the Jags have the thirdest, third hardest uh, overall opponent win win record from a year ago. So, you know, that could play a factor in how well the Jags do this season. Even with Nick Foles, you know, a new quarterback at the helm, we'll see how well that develops. But definitely... You know, there's an opportunity that this season could be worse than last season uh, if things don't go our way. So I'm going to say the floor for the Jags is four wins with the ceiling being nine wins. I'm saying nine wins, and I honestly think that's generous. I was going to go even lower. I was going to say seven. This schedule and these teams we play is going to be incredibly, incredibly tough, even with a new quarterback and a new offensive coordinator and things like that. Uh, that we're trying to use to really explode our offense and really put us out there uh, as far as winning games goes. But with this schedule and teams that are just overall better than the Jacksonville Jaguars, it's really hard for me to say that we're going to be able to reach double-digit wins. Again, like especially pro prior to the draft, you know, we don't know what we're drafting here. And, you know, now that we, we just signed Nick Foles, Chris Conley, Jack Jake Ryan, and uh, Ogabichi, the uh, tackle. So, you know, we didn't sign really any free agents that are going to drastically improve this team with the exception of Nick Foles. And we're, we're really just hopeful on Nick Foles uh, improving this organization and improving this team. So I think nine wins is a fair ceiling for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2019. What do you guys think? What do you, What is your floor and ceiling for the Jaguars for the 2019 season post free agency? Leave those in the comment section down below. And that was the Jacksonville Jaguars win-loss uh, ceiling and floor. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. That's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.